Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Paul, do you sleep well? I sleep like a baby. Do you really? Well, actually, I, wouldn't, I don't know why you say that. Sometimes, <laughs> when my kids were babies, they never slept. <laughs> Try to feel like a stupid baby when you're asleep. Go to sleep. Try no, sorry, I, I sleep well. Yeah, I do usually sleep well. It's not an issue for me. Like, so, like it is for some babies. Yeah, I'm not the I'm not the best sleeper. Oh, I right. feel you like mentioned that before. Yeah, I feel like I I don't need a ton of sleep, thankfully, but I feel like I still don't fall asleep very quickly, and sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night. So this topic is going to speak to me, and well, not specifically to me, but to lots of people, and lots of our patients have asked this: Why can't I sleep after my joint replacement yeah. surgery? I can't sleep. I'm really frustrated. I get that question a lot because it seems to be a common. Uh, I wouldn't say complication, but a common observation that we that we make uh, after we replace someone's joint. They come into the office after a few weeks and you know what, everything's going okay, but I just can't sleep. Yeah, collateral damage. Mm, that's a good way to look at it. And for a lot of times, I'd be like, huh, I don't know, it's just the way it is. Lots of people say it. Yeah. But then we looked into we looked into some of the science and the literature to see has anyone actually studied joint replacement patients to see a if they sleep worse than other people and if they do why and is there anything we can do about it it's a thing it's a real thing you're not you're not you're not a baby you're not you're not, you're not frustrated no. for no reason and you're not alone you're definitely not alone you may feel alone at two in the morning <laughs> watching this video because you can't fall asleep or an yeah. in fact you've probably fallen asleep if you started watching this video Ooh, yeah we have a couple of early ones you probably could watch I watch them to go to sleep. So science has found, or some studies have found, there are three main reasons why people after joint replacement surgery cannot fall asleep. What do you think number one is, Paul? I would hazard a guess that pain is number one, right? Pain is number one. If you're in pain, it's hard to fall asleep. It's hard to fall asleep, right? So you had an operation that out of necessity causes a lot of pain. Ouch. So even if you take pills really regularly, when you fall asleep, the pain medication wears off, then you wake up, then you gotta take your pills again, so it's very disruptive. Cycle. And, like we've said in a zillion of our videos, usually your pain doesn't go down to zero. So even when you're taking the pills, you knock the pain down, but often it doesn't go all the way away. So one of the number one reasons was, people have a lot of pain, I can't sleep because I'm in so much pain. That's it. Okay, pain, number two. Well, it relates to pain. Number two is medication. So after surgery, you're often taking multiple medications. Could be yeah. pain medication, could be a blood thinner, could be a nerve agent, could yeah. be a whole bunch of different things that your body is just getting used to. And like we've talked about in other videos, anytime you're ingesting something, it changes your body's chemistry and the way you feel and the way you do stuff and it disrupts your sleep. And if you look carefully, a lot of the narcotic uh, medications, when they're mixed with other medications, they often have caffeine uh, it's in with in it. There, I they know. sneak the caffeine in. I don't know if it's a regulatory thing or what, yeah. but uh, to offset the somnolence you get from a narcotic, they put in a caffeine. Right. And because you're, if you're taking this in the daytime, you know what I mean? You don't want to be falling asleep at work and everything. Right. So be, be careful. You might even be taking in caffeine uh, in the medications, but the medications have their own effects as well independent of caffeine, but definitely the medications can interfere with your sleep. And you're probably going, well, look at these two yahoos. Hey, you're in pain, so you can't sleep, so take some pain medication. Guess what? The pain medication is keeping you awake. But yeah, the stimulant in the pain medication is probably to keep you breathing. I think yeah. that's part of it, right? So yeah. ironically, they want to keep you a little bit awake so that you don't yeah. have yeah. a big sleep. Yeah. So you're in pain, you can't fall asleep, take pain medication, that's going to keep you awake. It's a vicious cycle. Right. We're not here to solve it, we're just here to tell you <laughs> right. why That's you can't right. fall asleep. It's not super helpful. It's no, not, it's not, not helpful not at all, all, actually. Thanks a lot. Wow, yeah. I can't sleep. Yeah. You confirm that. Now you know. Next video. Number, um, number three. And this, I think, people have an idea that it's happening to them, but I think because we're going to name it right now and validate it for them, I think it's going to make a big difference. It's a combination of anxiety and depression. It's out there. Yeah, which people probably, a significant proportion of people have that before the surgery. And then you had this big operation, mm -hmm. you can't sleep, you're in so much pain, you're in anxiety because you're like, maybe I'm never gonna get better. Yeah. This is taking so long, I'm getting depressed. So those are very real things. You think it, you start thinking it, thinking it, you're lying in bed, you got nothing else to it's do. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, so it's a real vicious cycle. So this is a very real thing, and to be honest, if it gets serious, you really should talk to your doctor about it. So anxiety mm -hmm. and depression are very calm, pervasive in our society, especially the pandemic has exaggerated this even more. 
So if you are feeling symptoms of severe anxiety or depression, you should talk to your doctor about that outside of the realm of your joint replacement, but just in general. It's really critical to get that dealt with. And we've got a video talking about that sort of stress, anxiety, depression triad and how that turns up the uh, volume on your pain as well. Yes, it's very, very real. It's organic. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing that they didn't talk about in the studies as much um, was the position that you sleep in. Mm. So you're a stomach sleeper, you're a side sleeper, you're not a lot of people are actually back sleepers, which yeah. actually, did you know, causes the least amount of wrinkles back sleeping? Oh, really? Yeah, so if you're on your face and it's like this, yeah. then you get like wrinkles on your face. No so way. a lot of people feel that it's actually best for you to sleep on your back it for wrinkles. It causes the most amount of snoring though, <laughs> which may be another reason you're not falling asleep. The partner beside you is snoring yeah. away. That's right. It sounds like a cruise liner coming into port. Right, so um, you're stuck sleeping on your back maybe for the first little while, so as you get closer to normalization after the process and you get to sleep the way that you used to sleep, often that gets better. Any idea how long this usually lasts, Paul, the sleep frustration? I know, because we just looked at the literature, but if you, well, we're gonna let the, our viewers guess, does it last one month, does it last two months, or does it last six months? And again, put your note in the comments, say, hey, at week whatever, or month whatever, that's when my sleep got better. But the answer is? Two months. Two months, two it's months. a couple of months. And, and months I would say, this. before I saw the literature, I would have guessed about that, because that's people say six, eight weeks, because usually the second yeah. follow-up is at the six week mark, and people are saying, oh, it's starting to get a bit better, but so a couple months. So if, if, so if you're at week seven, hang in there, you're almost there. Yeah, and you know what, if, you, if it's lasting longer than two months for you, that's okay. I mean, yeah. Two months is just an average uh, estimate of looking at a bunch of people, that's right. where it was. There's gonna be a lot of people that are less and a lot of people that are more. So don't freak out if you're, four, five, six months into it right. and you can't sleep, I have seen that happen before. Right. But it's rare, usually it's two months where you're feeling better. And if it does go really, really long, maybe consider other causes and maybe talk to your doctor. Yeah. Maybe it's not your joint replacement anymore. Yeah. Maybe you got sleep apnea. It's a snoring person next to you. Yeah. Not that we sleep next to each other. I didn't mean to point to you at that. I didn't imply that you snore. Plane screens and automobiles. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm just saying, in general, it's the partner beside you. <laughs> Obviously. So that gives you a little update. Sleeping after joint replacement is difficult, but it most often will get better after a couple of months. Yeah. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.